No, 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 no. No, that's fine. Yeah, there's your audience. We're having a conversation. Okay. Take two. Regina Holiday. Greg Masters reporting from HIMSS 2015 in Chicagoland. And it is my privilege to catch up with and get updated by one of my favorite people in the world, Regina Holiday. Hi, Regina. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. So here we are at HIMSS. And a lot... Fourth time. Fourth time. Yeah, amazing, huh? So let's talk about top of mind. What's going on for you at HIMSS? What are you seeing? What are you involved with? Tell us what's, what's happening. I am in the His Talk booth. The His Talk folks rock because they decided to fund five patients to travel to HIMSS. They paid for it, working with a couple other companies. They covered the exhibition badges, everything. And those patients are right now on the sales floor talking to vendors about the real demands of patients. So I'm in that booth today and tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, I go to Caradigm. And they decided to help fund patient travel scholarships with the Society for Participatory Medicine. And the reason that's good is why? Because <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people who design software and electronic medical record systems, and they never even ask a patient what they want or need. And they don't ask the doctors either, so this is a problem that's sort of universal. But if we get out there, we start talking, we change things. We make it usable. User experience, that's the future of healthcare, and we are part of that. Yeah, and this is a fun event. Not, not everybody can actually afford to even get here. Yes, there's many people who work in health information and technology that are not here today because they cannot afford the ticket costs, plus the travel, plus the hotel and lodging. So this was a really big deal that we can get patients in the door and helping. So big shout out to Kara Diamond, his talk. Yes, big shout out. Okay, so we just finished the I Heart Health IT yes. talk and you uh, gave a little pitch up there. What's, what's going on? Ah, yes, I'm very aggravated. So, so I've been working on a piece of legislation called Meaningful Use for about five years now. And this piece of legislation was about the fact that electronic medical records need to be adopted, but they also must be meaningful. And not just meaningful to doctors and institutions, but meaningful to patients and their families. Now, in order for them to be meaningful to patients and their families, patients and families must be able to get to that information. But recently, CMS decided to take the amazing amount of 5%, which is what they said, 5% of patients had to access few download transmit. That was too much. No, we would go to just one single case of an individual succeeding at that, and that proved that you fulfilled a requirement of meaningful use. Well, folks like myself, some folks who used to work in the federal government, vendors who are caring and wonderful and compassionate, we're all super aggravated. And we want to make sure that patients ask for the record. They sign a, cha sign a change.org petition that they would like to be able to access the record. That they do federal comment during the federal comment period on meaningful use stage two in the CMS measures of the proposed final rule. But on 4th of July, we all get out there on our portals and show that we want to access information. We demand it. It's our right. And this is a civil rights issue. If you go back in time, you think about reform that happened within civil rights. If you think about how hard it was for people to vote, this is the exact same kind of thing. They've made it challenging. They've made it impossible. No wonder patients haven't been able to get to this information. We've got to change that. So why the giant step back? Oh, there was institutions and they're not named very well, that thought this was too hard. It was a workflow issue, but also maybe patients didn't want it anyway. I think we've heard those kind of lines before, and that was back in the 1960s. So the way we're going to show otherwise is how? Oh, that patients want their records? Right. So, 4th of July, get online. You need to ask people, you need to get on your portal, you need to do secure messaging, show your doctors you do want to get this information, sign the change.org petition, and do the federal comment. And uh, there is a change.org petition yes, already? Yes, Cascadia, Sherry Reynolds already posted it today. All this stuff is happening now in real time, okay? So we are doing this really rapidly, and you can be part of that change. So we get a petition signed, we get people asking for their health records, right? Yes. Okay. So... What else is going on in the life of Regina Holiday? I'm putting a medical conference together. So I now live in Western Maryland where I can vote, which is so exciting, and potentially run for office. But 
Before that happens, I want to do a medical conference, and that would be out in the woods in a town of 825 people. I think we should do rural health care and talk about rural health care in the world of rural health care. So a whole bunch of amazing folks are going to come, get on a bus at Health Data Palooza, go all the way up on a three-hour drive to the mountains, and then we're going to have this amazing conference that's Burning Man meets healthcare. We've already got four fire dancers lined up and doctors and patients who are willing to sing and dance and talk about data and talk about policy and change the world together. And what are the dates? June 4th through 6th. So we can stir the pot a little more on the petitions and the requests for health oh, yeah. records. There'll be a whole bunch of planning happening at that event. And I understand we're going to try and do some um, over the pond hookups. What's that about? Yeah, so Doctors 2.0 done by Denise Silber. It's done at the exact same time as Cinderblocks, and that's in France, and we're in Grantsville, Maryland. So we decided, with wonderful technical help of some individuals, we would combine the two conferences doing live interviews from Paris to Grantsville. Awesome. So any other closing thoughts while we're here? Thank you so much for being there for us and spreading the patient word. Oh, pause. Okay. A word or two about the walking gallery. So I understand that we have I Am Jacket number 93, and you're up to how many now? We are now 380 jackets in the walking gallery, and there are 350 walkers. And for those who don't understand the walking gallery, what's it about? So this is a movement where I or other artists paint your patient story on the back of your business suit jacket, just like this one. And so when you see individuals walking around with a painting on their back, they're a member of the walking gallery. And what should that? What should I do when I see a jacket like that? Ask them about their story because their story is really important, and it's going to help change policies and make care better for us all. And as the one who's visioned many of these jackets. I know you have some help painting. Yep. Are you the one who comes up basically with the story for what goes on the jacket? I come up with the visual. The patient, it's their story. So they, it's a sacred agreement. Like I call it a co-mission, not a commission, right? So it's your story, my art, combining together and changing the world. That's awesome. Well, Reggie, good to see you. Thank you. We'll see you in, uh, in June. Yes, you will indeed.